Excellent! What's up everyone? It is Sunday afternoon. It's actually very rainy here in Southern California, which is weird. We have weather. There's like wind and stuff. So um, anyway, I was watching my wife play Final Fantasy VIII and I decided, you know what? I should do a Q&A video. Um, well, to be honest, I've been planning this for a little while. I was a little bit self-conscious because I was like, you know, there's lots of people who do like regular Q&A videos. I want to do this maybe like once a month. But then I remembered this. That sums it up for the tech world today. And now we'll shift gears to our new segment, Probing Paul, where Paul answers your tech questions. So that's the name we're going with for my segment. Okay. So I'm calling this video series uh, Ask Paul for now, but hey, I can bring Probing Paul back if that is what you guys want. And this video is truly all about what you guys want. So let's dive straight into it. I have quite a few questions to go through for today. I've, uh, I'm going to start actually, uh, I'm going to start out actually with one straight from YouTube. Uh, that's from Mr. Lithium 69 and this was posted on the video that I posted earlier this week about uh, overclocking non- K Intel Skylake processors. He asks, that unpopulated blank motherboard PCB with standoffs uh, is pretty cool. I guess this isn't really asking. It's, anyway. Uh, anyone know what that is? And there's another, there's actually a few other questions on this video asking that same kind of question. Um, and I can show that to you guys right now. Um, it's right here. Although my little test bed is still on it. And uh, basically this is it. Um, it's a blank motherboard PCB and it has uh, little rubber standoffs on it. I cannot tell you guys where I got this because I was told I'm not supposed to have this. But if you look at like a motherboard manufacturing video, they manufacture the PCB as per the layout of all the traces and everything like this first. And then it goes through a process called SMT, uh, which is, is super multi-transport. No, what does SMT stand for? Surface mount technology, where they actually start placing different things on there, and then they do like solder flow and all that kind of stuff over it. Anyway, you're not supposed to be able to get these uh, in this particular format with nothing on them. Uh, this came from a friend. I use it as a very easy, uh, like, portable uh, test bed, so I can just take a motherboard and set it on top. And it's nice because it's positioned for, far enough up that like dropping a graphics card in there and stuff still works and it's not too tough. But anyway, that's what that is. I actually get that question pretty frequently. So um, if anyone, if you see anyone asking that question in another video, direct them over here. All right. Uh, next uh, series of questions all come from Twitter. Uh, I'm Paul Hardware on Twitter if you guys want to send me questions in the future. And uh, let's start out with this one from DualShot. DualShot underscore CS asks, can you SLR Crossfire two different cards? Uh, for example, GTX 960 and 970. This is a, this is a tech support question. Uh, and I'm going to be doing a few of these here, but I, I, a lot of the other questions in this video are going to be a little bit more random. Uh, short answer here is no. NVIDIA has requirements for how you uh, can SLI things together. Uh, GTX 960 and GTX 970 don't go together. NVIDIA's requirements are it has to be the exact same GPU, so a GTX 960 or a GTX 970, and it also has to have the same... Uh, amount of frame buffer, the same amount of video memory that's also there. For example, a GTX 960 4 gig and a GTX 960 2 gig cannot be SLI'd together. Beyond that, of course, it has to have the SLI bridge directly. Um, AMD's requirements for crossfire are a little bit less stringent. Uh, AMD allows you to crossfire cards that are in the same family, not necessarily the exact same GPU. Um, so if you really are into crossfire, and you want more flexibility, or if you already have an existing card and you're looking to get another card that, that could drop in, uh, maybe consider AMD, I guess. AMD will even go so far as to let you crossfire like a 290X and a 390X together, because they're still based on the same GPU. Um, but there are some vagaries in there. I don't want to go into too much detail since I have lots of other questions to get to you, to get to you but dual shot, thank you for the question. Uh, let's move on to Reeve Taylor who asks, where do you see your channel in five years? A very good question. Um, this question, probably when I think about it, makes me think mostly about where the uh, computer industry, especially when it comes to like component level computer manufacturing goes, because there's been lots of speculation for many years that the whole the desktop is, is, you know, on its way out or that kind of thing. I don't necessarily believe that. I think desktops are still here for quite a bit longer. I think for people who want to get work done and people who need to do heavy lifting and for more advanced stuff. Oh. Wow, the wind's blowing. Um, for more advanced stuff like uh, like actually doing video rendering or 3D modeling or like VR work, there's lots of uses for full-size desktop computers. So I don't see my channel going too far away from what its current the current topics are um, as far as you know DIY PC uh, building stuff that kind of thing. Although I do want to continue to branch out because uh, when eventually 
all computers are, you know, the size of, of this coaster and, you know, can be bought for a hundred bucks each and you just set it there and it wirelessly connects to everything and manages your whole life for you and you don't need to touch it. Granted, that'd be kind of cool, but, you know, I like tinkering. So I might branch out in the future, uh, other stuff, I don't know, but, but yeah, hopefully in five years I'm still doing roughly the same of what I'm doing now, just with much faster hardware and VR capability and fancier, newer things, I guess. Okay, uh, let's move on to XIC, XISCA or BAMSIM, BAMSIM MC Pro. Anyway, how long have you been doing PC-oriented stuff is the actual question here. Uh, that goes all the way back to, uh, gosh, where would it start? Um, my dad had a console, just like a, a, like a keyboard and, a, and a, 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 like a, one of those old green CRT monitors back when I was like 9 or 10. And he would use it to remote into his work, and I would jump on there, and I did a little bit of like BBS stuff like back then. Um, probably more so, it started. It would start with like Commodore 64 was the first like computer that I kind of played with. I remember playing Jumpman Junior back on that, although I didn't, I never took it apart or anything like that. Uh, I started doing PC oriented stuff as far as actual PC oriented stuff when my dad decided to take us out when I was like 14, which would have been 94. Not to tell you guys how old I am or anything but um yeah about 14 we, we went out and got a, a an HP like an actual one of those flat desktops with them where the monitor sits on top and everything had that for a little while I upgraded the memory in that and learned quite a few lessons in the process I actually built my first computer when I was uh, 16 and then from there it just kind of took off and I, I never actually I would always build my own computers because I always just had more fun doing it and I like the flexibility and I like knowing about the stuff so yeah I guess it goes back to when I was early teens is kind of when I first started out all right uh, sneak C Corsair asks oh, what's one non PC or YouTube related hobby that you have and he follows up and says, "Not YouTube." He corrected himself. Okay, uh, I'm gonna. Oh, oh, sorry. I'm gonna give you three answers here. Uh, one is gonna be snowboarding. Even though I'm not a huge snowboarder, it is uh, something I really enjoy doing. And I have actually planned some trips coming up soon, so maybe I'll do some vlogging when I go snowboarding and that kind of thing. Really enjoy it. Again, I only go, get to go like maybe once or twice a season, but we're going to Mammoth uh, pretty soon, so excited about that. Um, second one would be guitar playing. Another thing that I can do, but I'm not good at, and I don't do often enough, but I enjoy playing guitar. I've played guitar in a video here or there before. Uh, and then third would be like hiking, I guess, hiking, backpacking. Um, I like I like exploring the outdoors, detaching, getting out into nature, and all that good stuff. So um, that's another one. But uh, thanks, Sneak Sea Corsair, for sending that in. How many more questions? I've, I've got like five or six more questions left, but these are these are more straightforward ones. So I'm going to try to bang through them pretty quickly. Uh, Geek. Geeky Extra Tech asks, what video on your channel was the video that made your channel big? Um, this is a hard question to answer directly because I, I will show you some of the, I guess, more popular videos on my channel, but the real answer here would be Newegg TV is really what, what really provided me with an existing audience when I was doing videos for Newegg. And when I started my own channel, there was just sort of a natural flow of people as I was like, hey, and I have this video over here on my channel too where I you know, I'd say my actual opinions and that kind of thing. So that was definitely the biggest help was uh, starting out with Newegg and that gave me kind of that launching point. It's one of the things that I always bring up when people ask me like, I'm starting a new channel, what can I do? And I, I always point out like, look, I had, a, I had a leg up on a lot of people by having that built-in audience with Newegg and uh, the audience that are, would already go to Newegg and watch Newegg videos and so they naturally see me and all that good stuff. Anyway, though, uh, here are the videos on my channel sorted by popularity. And hey, I have a new most popular video, my best CPU for gaming video uh, with Haswell E comparison to Skylake and Haswell. Uh, wow, broke 600,000. Happy about that. Um, but yeah, my Titan, my GTX Titan 4-way SLI video was very popular for a while. That's uh, two, almost three years old now. Um, a lot of my tutorials, I guess, are very helpful. Doing something that I know people will hopefully get a lot of benefit from in the long run, like my How to Clean a Mechanical Keyboard video, did that over a year ago, but it's still getting v regular views. It's still one of my very commonly viewed videos, and I still get comments on it and stuff. Um, so yeah, doing videos, I guess, that you feel like have a longer lifespan or that will help people for you know an extended period of time um, is often helpful. In doing the comparisons that people like to see. So like when the 960 4 gig first came out, I did a video on that and I specifically tailored it for using it with GTA 5, which was very popular at the time. Anyway, I'm probably going off on too much of a tangent, but those are some of the videos that made my channel popular. 
Awesome. Uh, Reem Lad 2K asks, what got you into computers or tech? And um, this is a typo, I'm assuming, computers or technology. Uh, going back to that other question of like how I kind of first built my own computer and all that kind of stuff. Um, I Legos. <laughs> is, is Legos a good answer here? Uh, I, from a very early age, I really liked just kind of taking things apart and putting them back together. Uh, from like a cassette tape, like I used to do, I used to do like surgery on cassette tapes and take the things apart and take the cassette tapes out and like fix like splicing together cassettes. I don't know, just stuff like that. Building whatever popped into my head with Legos was always um, something that kind of um, I I felt like I, I had an aptitude for earlier on in life. And then when I started working with computers, I guess I like I'm big on logic. I like things to be to make sense and be logical. And I always thought computers made sense. The way computers worked just kind of made sense to me. So I guess those kind of things earlier on kind of got me into that. And then of course the stuff I already mentioned earlier in the video uh, with my dad, uh, sort of my dad, my dad does software, but uh, he, he kind of started me out down that path earlier on. Although now I'm the hardware guy. So he always, if he has questions about hardware, I get them. Okay. Um, here's a Lamont Cranston question. Uh, he asks, will you ever do any Hackintosh related videos? Um, this, I feel like, also ties into those other questions about how I started out with technology and computer building. I would say probably not, at least not in the near future. I don't have any plans to because I don't really work with much stuff over on the Mac side. That's been kind of intentional on my part because I get a lot of tech support questions and as much as I like having a breadth of knowledge, I just kind of cut out the Mac side of it, I don't know, quite a few years back, simply because I didn't want to have to keep up with both. And because I have been someone who has built my own computer for many, many years now, uh, the Mac OS was always something like, like building a Hackintosh. It's easier now, but like, like Apple blocked that for quite a while. They didn't want people building their own Hackintoshes or their own Mac computers. So that was, I was kind of like, all right, then I won't. Uh, I'll just stick with Windows and stuff like that. So that's why I really haven't done much with Hackintoshes. Um, again, it's not something that I would ever rule out. Uh, it might be a fun thing to kind of delve into, um, but I don't, I don't have any plans for it in the immediate future, I guess, is the answer to that one. All right, uh, I have, what, four more questions. Okay, this one's from Swarnava Seal, or at Silver Sparks on Twitter. Uh, one software or app that I can't live without, be it for PC or for mobile. Give this some serious consideration. I was gonna say Premiere, because I edit all my videos on Premiere, and that would be that would be rough to live without. But I have used other editing pro, uh, software, so I will say the software that I used to help organize this video, which was uh, Google Docs. I have become really, really uh, invested in using Google Docs for lots of stuff. Just to, like I can get my laptop and type something here, and then it's just over here, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I use Google Docs all the time, and I hope there is no evil thing at the bottom of it that's watching everything I do or something like that. Uh, Jim Mio or at plain old Jim asks, would you rather fight 1000 forever a Kyle sized fractal Josh's or one Jay's two cents sized Nori hardware? A very good question. And I see what you were going for here, Jim, uh, forever a Kyle or, or, or Kyle who I do, uh, the, the awesome hardware show with on Tuesday evenings is, is he's very small. He's a small person, but he's not like super tiny. Um, if, if we're talking like, you know, the size of, of, you know, like this mug or something like that, then yeah, maybe I would go for the, the forever a Kyle size Fractal Josh's. Fractal Josh also is a mean, he's a mean fighter, a nasty fighter. So, um, you know, that's something to, to, to consider too. So yeah, I guess I would have to go with the J's two cent size Nori hardware. Cause I feel like a thousand Fractal Josh's of any size is just not something that, that I want to deal with ever. Liam or Liam Mr. K asks, how tall am I? I am about five ten and a half, five five eleven. So I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea if this is accurate, but about but a little less than six feet tall is about one point eight meters for any of our friends who are viewing this from across the pond, or I guess no, not across anywhere else in the world besides America. <laughs> well, there's a few other places that use. Uh, the imperial system, but mostly America. All right. Uh, last question here. This one's from Jason Evangelo at Kill Your FM. Uh, he's a writer of tech articles on Forbes and lots of other places too. Anyway, uh, boxers or briefs? Uh, briefs, 100%. Always briefs. Sometimes I'll wear boxer briefs, but that's usually for like working out or that kind of thing, you know, when you need a little bit more security, I suppose. 
Anyway, guys, that's all for this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Just answering some random questions from uh, all you folks out there. Again, I want to do this, I'm thinking maybe monthly, maybe at the end of every month I'll do a little Q&A section. Uh, but again, let me know in the comment section down below if you're enjoying this, if you want to see it more frequently than once a month, what you think I should do with the title, if you think I should change it up at all. But thanks to all you guys who have submitted questions. Feel free to leave some more in the uh, comment section on YouTube, and I'll check that out before I do the next Q&A video. And as always, thank you for watching.